PC gaming is about to change forever. Netflix is going to make it easier for you to kick your ex off of your account. And Gigabyte, Gigabyte, Gigabyte joins the Intel team. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the Internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And again, just want to remind you that on Friday, we have our upcoming Cannonball for the Cure charity stream. In case you missed yesterday's announcement video, you should check that out right up there. But let's talk about the announcement of Direct Storage 1.1, which in case you haven't heard of it, let me give you a little recap. Direct Storage is going to allow your graphics card to start processing storage stuff, which one of the bottlenecks when it comes to PC gaming, when it comes to load times and the actual streaming of assets into the video games is can be a CPU bottleneck. And so GPU decompression and compression allows for it to actually be run on the graphics card and be done in a much quicker clip so that PCs can actually now catch up to consoles, which load games a lot faster, which like, I don't think there's any argument there. Maybe you guys could have some argument because you're pedantic, but I mean, the PlayStation 5 loads video games nearly instantly. I think it's like two seconds to get into a loaded game from the, the home screen. It's just incredible. Xbox Series X also being incredibly fast, but Direct Storage 1.1, the API now opens up GPU decompression. It used to be only that it could compress it, but not decompress it, so the CPU still had to do the heavy lifting. But according to Microsoft themselves, this should allow for up to load times being reduced up to 40%. Microsoft continuing on to say that when a game is run, the assets are transferred to system memory where the CPU decompresses the data before it's finally copied into GPU memory to be used as needed. The transfer and decompression of these assets on gaming devices contributes heavily to load times and limits how much detail can be used in open world scenes. And they showed off in their kind of controlled environment. What they showed is that the GPU is actually three times as fast as the CPU. And you can see that the max CPU usage is much less so that your CPU bottleneck actually might not be as prevalent depending on what game you're trying to play. But that's the optimized demo that Microsoft's showing off. But they're claiming that roughly 40% better loading times is going to happen when it comes to direct storage one. Point one. I'm very excited for this technology to continue to develop. It's something that as I'm playing console games, I'm realizing I'm sorely missing when it comes to uh, the PC experience. I think the fastest PC game that I've experienced in terms of loading time has been Cyberpunk 2077. And even then, it's not as fast as something like Spider-Man natively is on the PlayStation 5. I'm excited for Direct Storage 1.1. Let me know if you are as well down below in the comments while I let you know about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. In fact, nearly every video we do is brought to you by Helix Sleep in some way because they are the bed that I sleep on every single night to make sure that I'm well rested enough to actually bring you these videos. Helix Sleep is definitely the mattress company you should be checking out if you're looking to get a new one because number one, they deliver it straight to your door so that you don't have to actually try to figure out a way to get it home. Number two, they give you a hundred night sleep trial so that you can make sure you actually love the bed. But because they have their personalized sleep quiz, you can make sure that the mattress that's getting delivered to your door actually meets all of your needs. You take the sleep quiz if you're sleeping by yourself or you've got a significant other who shares the bed with you. You can enter all of the details of whether you like your mattress firm, soft or hard or whether or not you're a backside or front sleeper. They're going to cater that right to you. And that's exactly what me and my wife did. And we ended up with the Dusk Lux mattress that we've had since our first day moving to Pennsylvania. And it has brought me the best nights of sleep that I've had in quite some time. Our kids actually also have their own Helix Sleep mattresses and they sleep like little babies, even though they're a little older than that. My favorite thing about my Helix Sleep mattress is number one, that it's king size. Number two, that it's actually the perfect firmness for me, as well as my wife. We made sure that we actually came to a good compromise, even though we actually have different sleep preferences. And in case you're looking for a new mattress, Helix Sleep has a 10 year warranty, financing options, as well as flexible payment plans to make sure that not only is your mattress suited for you, but your ability to actually buy one is also catered to you as well. They're delivered again, straight to your door for free. And if you go to our link in the video description, helixsleep.com forward slash UFD tech, you can actually get up to $200 off your Helix mattress, plus two free pillows, which we actually used on last year's charity stream. And they were phenomenal. The dream pillow pillows are fantastic. I absolutely love them. But if you use our link again, you can save $200 off on your mattress. Get those pillows, helixsleep.com forward slash UFD tech. You can start sleeping like I do, which I like sleep is not one of those areas where I worry anymore because I actually know that when I hit my bed, it's going to be perfect for me. So you can have that experience too. check it out at the link in the video description. Big thanks again to Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's video. And you better not sleep on crypto stonks. Bitcoin up a bit. 
19,510. Ethereum, also the same. 1328. Dogecoin up 1%. I'm going to kill Crypto Stonk soon. I just. I, I'm getting that feeling in my nethers. I'm getting bored with it. You guys let me know what you think of crypto stonks, but I'm not getting the feeling of killing Reese. Not today, at least. What you got for the UFD deals, bud? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to UFD deals. We're bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I know Brett's probably joking about me not being here, but I'll show him. But in all seriousness, we've got some cool deals today, starting with the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. This 32 gig kit running at 2666 megahertz at C16 is currently going for only $89.99, which is 31% off and the lowest price in 30 days. And then we have the LG 32QN600B, which is their 32 inch 1440p IPS monitor with HDR10 and AMD FreeSync support. It's currently going for only $159.99, which is 43% off or $120 off. And don't forget, you can find these deals and more linked in the video description. I'm hand you off back to Brett now. Cheers. Reese is the buddy old pal bringing you the save. Okay, that we're, we're gonna call him saving Santa from now on. I'm gonna forget that tomorrow But YouTube's forgetting about their 4k premium test that they did which in case you don't remember There was a whole hullabaloo that they were testing out You could only have the 4k viewing option if you had YouTube premium This was a test that they do they do tons of tests I saw one recently where they're gonna change the subscribe button from red to white or like grayish So it's less intrusive to you. YouTube just doesn't care about you subscribing to channels That's kind of the thing. There was a whole uproar about this you 4k premium thing my personal thing is that i don't like that they're removing a feature that's been there for a while even though i can understand the financial and structural implications of them keeping it for the long term i get that it's just i don't like them taking something away without giving something in return additionally i think that if they were to do that it would have to be only on desktop and mobile only and that 4k tv should still be able to access it no problem because that's where you're likely going to view the content in 4k natively is on a television that's just my general sentiment about it, but YouTube replying that they've turned off the experiment. Viewers should now be able to access 4K quality resolution without premium membership. And they also gave uh, some places for feedback in case you wanted to let YouTube know how you feel about it. I do think the general consensus is, I don't really use 4K, it's not a big deal, which I totally get, totally on board with. I just also think that maybe YouTube should uh, incentivize people to join premium instead of taking something away to incentivize people. But TikTok's taking something away from its creators and that is the ability to live stream if you're of the ages of 16 and 17 because it was previously that you would be 16 or older to go live on TikTok. That is no longer the case. It's gonna be 18 and older as of November 23rd. TikTok also rolling out live streams that are gonna be intended for mature audiences only or adult only, but that's not gonna be in the way of explicit content, but rather when it comes to colorful language in traumatic subjects, which if I know anything about TikTok's live streaming feature, it's that don't do it because they ban you for harassment and bullying when you're literally just saying thank you to people on Twitch for gifting you a whole bunch of stuff. Subs. That's just that's just how the cookie crumbles. And somebody needs to give this to Reese Stack because he does all of the design work for UFD Tech on his iPad. Well, new iPad Pro M2s are likely rolling out within the next few days. Bloomberg reporting that Apple is getting ready to ship those out up to 20% clock speed boost as well as an iPad dock with an integrated speaker that should come out sometime next year, which I kind of dig. I saw somewhere that Google did this as well. But if Apple has shown us anything, it likely will be better vertically integrated and make a little bit more sense within the context of their ecosystem. I'm kind of excited to see it. And Netflix trying to change the context of their ecosystem. One of the things that's been coming out is Netflix is losing subscribers and therefore losing money. And one of the ways they're trying to stymie that is by making people who are mooching off of other people's accounts actually pay for it. And so they're actually rolling out an easy way to make that happen, which I'm actually a huge fan that they're doing this. And it's just going to be allowing you to take your browsing history and all of your viewing history and migrate it to a new account so that you can actually get set up, start paying for it, but not lose any of the recommendations of those beautiful Netflix shows you watch. Comment what your favorite Netflix show is down below. Engadget reached out to Netflix to find out if this works if you already have an account. Let's say you sign up because you know somebody's gonna be kicking you off of their account. Well, then you can sign up first, but then you wouldn't be able to migrate. It does seem like Netflix is focusing on new acquisitions and getting people to sign up freshly, whether or not, I mean, it, it should be for both, but I could understand the difficulties of trying to migrate a viewing profile into an existing account and how that would be slightly more complicated, but it could help ease the transition and bolster the revenues of Netflix. 
6. And speaking of transitioning things, we're in a midst of a transition when it comes to graphics technologies, graphics standards, and display standards. DisplayPort 2.1 getting announced yesterday. This is the rumored specification that's supposed to be coming out to the RDNA 3 GPUs that NVIDIA was just like, nah, you don't need it. You get DisplayPort 1.4a. But according to VESA, they're certifying the DisplayPort 2.1 setup and essentially everything that's been a certified 2.0 product will actually still work with 2.1. Again, NVIDIA's GPUs not relevant in this, but there will be DisplayPort DP40 cables, which will support up to a maximum throughput of 40 gigabits and DP80 cables that will support up to 80 gigabits per second, which should be good for like 16K at 60 Hertz or 4K 240 without display stream compression and that you could actually run it at full resolution, full speed and make it beautiful before your eyes, even though you don't have a GPU that can power it because the RTX 4090 only uses 1.4a. It's a great world we're living where there's not a whole lot going on there. I wouldn't be surprised if we see like a, a quick refresh of like the 4090 Ti or like a 4090 Super as 2.1 because it just, it would make so much sense. And it makes sense that Intel bringing on board partners for their GPU is Gigabyte announcing that they will have at least the low end GPU supported right now. A380, A310 GPUs coming out from Gigabyte at being a board partner for Intel. Not yet known whether or not they're gonna support the 770s and 750s, but it's at least good to see existing AIB partners who work with other you know, big GPU manufacturers starting to work with Intel. More support happening. First generation to the kid GPU. Looks like uh, we're on the upswing with Intel here. And I'm on the downswing of this video because I'm done. I'm going to go do a whole heck of a lot of prep for the cannonball. I'll see you tomorrow for hot news. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know what my life holds right now.